So it might surprise you to find out that one of the questions I get so often is, hey, Greg, what's the worst thing you've ever drank since I've drank some pretty terrible stuff? Uh, it's always hard to answer that question right on the spot. You know, right off the top of my head, I got a lot of stuff going on. I've made this show for six or seven years. I don't have a perfect recall of every, uh, every bad drink I've ever had. So to answer that question, uh, and hopefully this is of interest to you, hopefully this is fun. Uh, to answer that question, I have put together a list of the worst absolute nightmares I have ever had the extreme misfortune of drinking here on the podcast. Let's take a look. This abomination is called an infected whitehead shot. Mm. It's made by placing equal parts vodka and Bloody Mary mixed together and then topping it up with some cottage cheese. The thing about that is that I actually kind of like cottage cheese and I'm using just a commercially available Bloody Mary mix. We're using the Murphs famous Bloody Mary mix. As long as it's got some serious horseradish in it, and it does, this might actually be good, <laughs> as stupid as it sounds. Like Bloody Mary mix, tomato, horseradish, and cottage cheese doesn't sound like a terrible combo. And then there's also some vodka in there. All right, well, it does take a minute to get the courage. I should have had a shot of something else first, you know, like a little Dutch courage for my Satan's courage. Oh yeah, you can really see the cheesiness in there. What's the appropriate toast for this? My life. Thank you. God damn it. God, that's bad. <sighs> it's terrible. No! It is not horseradishy enough. It's a little bit of black pepper and tomato. <sighs> and chunky? It's chunky. Chunky is the word to describe it. You have to chew your way through that one. And it really makes the hair on the back of your neck stand on end. That is a tasting note. Put it on the screen. It fills you with evil. I don't know how else to describe it. It's so much worse than I was prepared for that to be. I really actually thought that one might be kind of in a way to ease my way, and maybe it was, in a way to ease my way in here. I thought that would not be so bad. Um, it's bad. It's so salty, man. It's just so salty. It's not really hot or spicy the way you want it to be at all. If I was blindfolded and you told me this is olives and brine and cottage cheese. Um, I would have believed you. The vodka, a very fine vodka, Kettle One, available now at Curiata, drink.curiata.com. Well, the vodka in there is vodka, so I suppose I just had an ounce and a half of vodka and I'm the drunker for it. It is, I would say, small comfort. It is no comfort at all to know that some portion of my brain cells were destroyed in the process of drinking that and in maybe some way will contribute to my not remembering the experience. But no, I, I think that that one is, is gone straight through the hippocampus into the long-term memory. I think that's gonna stick. In short, tis bad. Let's see here. Oh, this one was right on top. What's this? Uh, from the patio well, table 322 in the dining room. A Malibu pineapple old fashioned. What the fuck? What the, f who would do that? Why would you do that? Malibu pineapple old fashioned? Not Malibu, not the coconut rum liqueur, but the pineapple variant of the coconut rum liqueur. I don't think I've got pineapple Malibu. Do I have some kind of a pineapple rum? Bring that in, mysterious hands. Oh, good, in the plastic jug. Parrot Bay pineapple, Caribbean rum with natural pineapple flavors, only 21% alcohol by volume. Look, Malibu is not a rum, it's a sweetened, highly sweetened liqueur, with the Parrot Bay pineapple being at 21 proof, 21%. I have a regular bottle of Malibu. Oh yeah, mysterious hands, bring me the Malibu. I think it's, I think it's gotta be in the same ballpark. Oh, 21%, look at that. I think we're in business. I have a funny feeling this will be really good analog to the Malibu. You know, it's not a perfectly scientific experiment, but let's see how, a quick taste, a little nip. Yeah, that's what I like once in a while, a little nip of the Parrot Bay pineapple rum. Yeah, top of the morning to you here. Whoa! What the fuck? It tastes like pineapple. It does not taste like rum. It tastes real bad. There's a, a an element of that that does not taste ingestible. Like, I always joke that Malibu tastes like drinking suntan lotion. 
but like the smell of suntan lotion. I assume that drinking suntan lotion would taste like your body rejecting it because it's made of poison. That's what this tastes like. Just as soon as it hits your throat, your body's like, get it out, get it out of me. So we're gonna make it old fashioned with that. Okay, get yourself a nice big tube of ice there. There you go. Add to it your uh, couple dashes of Angostura bitters. I think that with a Malibu pineapple old fashioned, you can go three or four actually. You know, normally just two, but I would go a little extra on the bitters maybe. I don't normally do this kind of thing, but like I'm going to put in the smallest amount of simple syrup I could possibly manage. A drop, boop, that's it. Not a bar spoon, but like a, a dash, a dasher of simple because this is all sugar and adding more sugar will be a mistake. And now two ounces of plastic bottle Pirate Bay pineapple rum. Not a sponsor of this episode, by the way. I don't want anybody to think that we're showing favoritism. There it is, one Malibu-ish old fashioned. Just stir that in the glass until it's done. Feel your soul leave your body. No, I'm just waiting for the glass to get cold. Yeah, there it is, the icy embrace of the void, perfect. And uh, a twist of orange, as an old fashioned should have. That's very important to this, to the preparation of this drink, so don't mess around with that. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure you get all those oils. I like to drop it right in the glass. And there it is, Malibu-ish pineapple old fashioned. How did I, how did I get here? What happened? Holy shit. That's a smell. Pulp mill. Yeah, like it's got straight up cabbage fart smell. Okay, let's see how the Malibu-ish pineapple old fashioned is that was ordered for table 322. What? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh God. You have to track down who ordered this. Wars will spring up in this person's wake. Nation will rise against nation. The seas will turn as blood. This person is the Antichrist. What had to be wrong with your mind? <laughs> come up with this. A non-diseased soul could not have come up with a sentence such as, Malibu pineapple old fashioned. It just ain't right. <laughs> I don't know how else to express to you the wretchedness of this glass. Oh, it's all pulp mill. It just tastes like drinking a pulp mill, like rot and decay tinged with slightly spicy bitterness and fed pineapple notes. It's plenty sweet. I, I, it was the right call to not add sweetness. Oh, good Lord. This drink makes me want to quit the show. <laughs> this drink should be a meme. I swear to God, I, I defy you to come up with a drink worse than this. That's a real drink. That's not just like, oh, I put together some motor oil and uh, horse jizz, you know, like, like that would be worse, sure. But like, that's not a thing that you could actually do. Go into your bar and invent a worse drink than the Malibu pineapple old fashioned. You cannot, it cannot be done. I, there should be a fucking X prize for this. Hold, oh my God. <laughs> I didn't know that flavor was possible via known organic compounds. My Lord, <laughs> holy shit, that's bad. There's no part of you when drinking this that screams, uh oh, you drank ammonia or bleach or something like that. Like it never manages to fall outside of the imagined range of flavorable tastes. I don't know how else to explain that, but like, this is like a color out of space. You know, it's just a taste. It's just a flavor, but it burns. So this customer is both very, 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 very wrong. And also very, very dangerous. The person who invented this drink is a danger to all who surround them. No customer could be more wrong. This customer is very wrong. <laughs> oh my God. All right, I'm back. Things are getting a little bit 70s. Maybe the effects of the Southern Comfort. We're gonna move right along now, apparently to a drink. I can't believe somebody put into print called this Comfort Old Fashioned. Oh boy. So it says I should start with a half a teaspoon of sugar. It then instructs me to move on to a single dash of Angostura bitters. Now, 
perplexingly, I am instructed to add half an ounce of sparkling water, a classic stalwart ingredient of so many old fashioned. Aren't there late old fashioned recipes that call for sparkling water? Terrible ones, but. I think you've just hit the nail on the head. The terrible ones, yeah. One half ounce, sir. <laughs> and now I must add one and a half ounces of Southern Comfort. The comfort of the South. <laughs> okay, there you go. One and a half ounces of Southern Comfort. I'm going to now just try to stir that up without the ice. Really adding that sparkling water really just accelerates the melt process. So let's throw an ice cube in there. And by throw, actually in this case, I'm gonna gently lower it in on a spoon so it doesn't splash back out. And now I'm gonna stir that up. It says I need to have a lemon twist. So people always ask me, how do you get such a good spray out of your citrus? You want the peel to feel fresh. And I can tell by touching it if it's gonna be any good or not. It should feel hard and maybe even a little waxy. If they've been sitting on the counter like these have and they get soft, they're not gonna spray really good. Now it calls for an orange slice and a cherry. Why not? We can do all of it. Here we go. I do like oranges, they're delicious. Underrated those oranges. Famously a forgotten fruit. Got my orange slice right. I need my table joy maraschino cherries. Plunk in a cherry and put an orange slice on the side there. <laughs> you know, if I didn't know better, if I didn't think, my God, that is going to be a terrible old fashioned when I see all that going on, I would have looked at that in the 70s and thought, now there's a fellow who knows how to cut an old fashioned. All right. I thought it was getting just a little inappropriate with all of this, so I wanted to cover up with the ascot. That's really what happened here. I just thought that would make it better. Is it too much now? I mean, no. The answer is yes. When she, with that long of a reply, it's just too no, much. It's We've carried this joke too far. All right, here we are. The comfortable old, or they actually call it a comfort old fashioned. Much lemon in the nose. Oh, wow. Ah, oh, bananas. I definitely got some like burning kind of rubber shit in there. Man, fuck, Jesus. Sweet, too sweet, tires. It tastes like you took a stinky old tire and you filled it with hot bananas. Oh, and coughs here. There's like a real strong medicinal note in that. So in other words, it's delicious. Well, contrary to popular belief, an old fashioned is not made better with Southern Comfort. Let's talk about Eldermancy. Now this drink, if it can be called that, was created by Sam Regal in an ad read he did for well, Elder Mancy. Literally though, since the minute that went out live, people have been asking me to make it myself. And I'm not really sure what the intent is here. Am I supposed to just make it, am I supposed to make it better? Or am I supposed to just do what he did exactly and subject myself to the same torture? I think probably you just want to see me drink this nightmare juice um, and be tortured by it. And I'm gonna level with you. I haven't tested it yet. Why would I? Why would I test this? I already know what goes into it. Um, and I think that that first reaction probably should just be on camera. Now he free poured everything, but he does call out measurements as he goes. So do I do as he says, or do I do as he does? Yeah, we're gonna do with what he said. I think we're gonna follow along with his directions to the degree that we're capable here. This is elderberry liqueur and uh, I need an ounce of it, okay? I assure you this is, I mean, I put way more effort into this than I should have, but here it is, elderberry liqueur. It might actually qualify, um, it's, it's sugar rating might make it actually mean that this is elderberry cream. This might be a creme de elderberry because it's very high in, in sugar. Um, I apologize if you know Eldermancy purists are offended by my use of a creme de elderberry versus an elderberry liqueur. Next, we need one ounce of lemon juice. So we need one ounce of lemon juice in our Eldermancy. Powerful pigments in that elderberry. Just a little drop left in my shaker made that very purple. He calls for a splash of dry vermouth. Let's say that that's a half an ounce, right? A, a splash, I don't know what a splash is, but here we go. A half an ounce of Dolon dry. Boom. And uh, now it starts getting pretty weird. A whole shot of espresso, why not? I found out today that my espresso machine is broken and uh, it's a real disappointment, so we had to go buy some espresso. So here we go, a shot of espresso, the whole shot of espresso from my local coffee house. Just pour that right in there. Next we have rum for R. Uh, the bottle they're using is very obviously Bacardi Silver. He calls for a shot. Now when most people say shot, they mean an ounce and a half roughly, right? So that's okay, fine. We get an ounce and a half of 
of Bacardi Silver. I'm not even sure this is gonna fit in my shaker because there's some huge pours coming. Next, we get to Mezcal for the letter M. Sam calls for two shots, two, two, two shots, and his hands are very heavy here. Fine, two shots, three ounces of Mezcal, and I'm gonna go with Dos Hombres. I don't think it matters. For the record, I know exactly what this is, what's gonna be the most dominant flavor in this drink at this point. Like nothing else we've done at this point matters. We're putting three ounces of Mezcal in here. This whole thing now tastes like Mezcal. It's gonna be purple Mezcal. Then he randomly decides to call for what he, he describes as three shots of absinthe. Three shots of absinthe. Even if we were using equal parts with absinthe, you will taste nothing but the absinthe, okay? Nothing, but fine, fine, three shots. That's four and a half ounces of absinthe. That's like, that's a lot of absinthe. That's an insane amount of absinthe, right? That's enough absinthe for, you know, six people to have a drink. And here we go, four and a half ounces of absinthe. It smells like burning leather from hell. And my shaker's very full. It's a very pricey cocktail. Uh, for N, he uh, uses Newcastle Brown Ale. Now, this surprised me. I, I looked around. Um, I, I don't think I've ever, until this week in my life, I've never been to a liquor store or beer shop and not seen Newcastle Brown Ale, but not this week. I couldn't find any anywhere. So I needed an ale that started with an N and I found a North Coast Brewing uh, red ale. So this is close enough to Newcastle Brown Ale. And I very strongly want to not add this in my shaker. Uh, because one, my shaker is pretty full at this point, and two, if I put anything carbonated in here, it's going to explode. And since I shoot this alone, I have to clean that up. So we are going to insist on modifying the recipe. This will go into the mug once the drink is poured, right? He then calls for a cherry for garnish, but he puts it into the shaker. It's possible that pulverizing that cherry is the secret to this whole thing working. You know, that could be the trick. And then now the P.S. de la Resistance yogurt. I don't know how much is the right amount to put in there. I think I'm just gonna go with a couple of bar spoons. If I had a gallery here, like he did when he was doing this for real, there'd be a lot of screaming at me right now, I think, because they were screaming at him to not do what he was doing. I think that's enough. It's also as much as my shaker will hold. This is a very fancy drink for a very discerning individual. Um, I think that, Sam, you're showing me up. I'm glad to learn your secrets. So let's shake this with ice. Oh, there's the, that's the good stuff there. Satan's brew. All right, there we go. Oh, God. Yeah, it's a good thing I didn't add the beer to it. It's already kind of exploding. It looks very fancy in there. I thought about drinking this right out of the shaker like he did, or I don't know, but I felt like putting it into a big glass mug so you guys can all really see what's going on in here would be most satisfying. Perfect. We're gonna crack open this here beer and put in the, the Newcastle, sorry, not Newcastle, the North Coast Brewing Company's ale that we should have added before. And just fill her up. And that looks like about what he had added. There it is, the Elder Mancy. Let's see how it is. Down the hatch and uh, nice knowing you. Oh, man, it's very bad. You know what, it, it's funny, I said it looked like chocolate milk. It tastes, does it taste like chocolate milk? It does not taste like chocolate milk, but it kind of does. It has like a texture like a chocolate milk that's gone bad a long time ago. Oh, you get the coffee. That's what that is, I was gonna say it tastes like coffee. It tastes like coffee, because there's coffee in there, there's espresso, and that might be why it tastes a little like chocolate milk and coffee and the yogurt. But the main thing it tastes like all that it tastes like is absinthe, lots of absinthe, very absinthe, gross, bad chocolate milk. Oh, and it leaves you with a really phlegmy texture in the mouth. I mean, just like the world's worst seasonal allergies all at once. You don't get the mezcal or anything other than the absinthe. You only taste absinthe and cream, yogurty, curdled. Badness. You may be Satan himself, Sam Regal. <laughs> Gets worse. Oh, it turned real worse. There might be flavor striations in there. The, the different layers are different. Oh my God, that tasted like a fucking ashtray. Ah. Just like acrid, burning nightmare 
ash. Mm. I cannot save this drink, and I don't want to. I don't want to remake it better. I want... This is what I want to do. And I'm going to burn the glass. You ever have to just rethink your life? Mm. How did I get here? So let me get this straight. You're telling me that if I put together, supposedly, balsamic vinegar and any flavored seltzer, particularly La Croix, is it La Croix or La Croix? La Croix. If I put any La Croix in with my balsamic vinegar, um, it's gonna taste like what now, Coca-Cola? So I'm gonna put some balsamic vinegar in here and, and now I can just add any flavored we got Pamplemouse Sanzo Lychee. I'm gonna go with the Pamplemouse. And let me tell you right now, from where I'm standing, all I can smell is vinegar. So how the hell this is gonna taste like Coca-Cola, I don't know. Something tells me that I'm about to get punked. I also think it's important to the origin story of this that, that apparently some girl's like, my yoga instructor taught me this trick. <laughs> oh, wow. Wait a second. We're doing, this is a yoga trick? Hold on a second. So this comes straight from the mouth of yoga. Yeah, all right. I, I want this to work, I really do. I gotta say too, like you don't know, that, like you may not realize it, but balsamic vinegar is sweet. So it is one of the craziest things I've ever heard. But it's also, I could see it possibly working out. We're going with the, the grapefruit. I, I have a feeling that's our, our winner. And uh, we'll just finish our pour up here. I mean, that looks like Coca-Cola. It fizzes like Coca-Cola. Uh, Coca-Cola does have like a really specific like fizz. And that nails it. I mean, like that is visually speaking, even the way like the little bubbles they were, I don't know if they are anymore, but they're clinging to the metal. Everything about it is behaving visually like Coca-Cola. It's absolutely the spitting image. And I would say that if you wanted to prank somebody, I think this could be a great prank to serve them this as a glass of Coca-Cola. Because I am assuming that this is about to taste absolutely nothing, <laughs> nothing like a Coca-Cola. That's not to say that it won't be good because the idea of Balsamic vinegar soda, that doesn't sound bad. And I bet if you called it something, I mean, you might even be able to sell that. That doesn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not crazy. But that it's gonna taste like Coke, that's crazy. Anyway, let's find out. No. No! No! I've been punked! No! In a million years, that doesn't taste like a Coca-Cola. No. Oh, God! It's vinegar. It's a glass of vinegar. It's not even in the same universe as Coca-Cola. I fucked up. I should have just played it like it totally does and make you do it. We have a can of Coke back here for comparison. I don't need to open it. It tastes like acidic burning vinegar. Now, I am curious, like, what if we sweeten the shit out of it? Like, just out of curiosity. The purpose was to drink something that had no sugar or whatever. Well, it's not no sugar, actually. It's probably three grams of sugar, so not much. But like uh, three grams per tablespoon? What? So this is pure sugar is what that tells me. <laughs> three grams of sugar per tablespoon? That's nuts. So, I mean like, but yeah, obviously if we add sugar to this, we're gonna defeat the purpose of it because the whole idea is that's a health thing. It's better. It's still vinegar, nowhere near Coke. It's strongly vinegar. I'm not gonna lie. I don't hate it. You remember I did that episode on the Peacemaker drink where I was like, oh shit, vinegar is delicious. I think it's a little strong for most humans. I would drink this. I actually like this. I'm worried that I would feel not well, like that I would give me really bad heartburn or something if I finish it, but I, I find it tasty, but also in absolutely no way does it taste like Coca-Cola. Sweetening it does make it kind of interesting though. I'm not gonna lie. The one flaw about salad dressings is that you can't drink them in public. People just don't appreciate that kind of thing. I'll be right back with some more drinking dressing, maybe. I actually don't even know what's coming up next. This one they call the tapeworm shot, this thing. This is called a tapeworm. Very similar, I would say, to the whitehead shot in, in many ways. Equal parts Tabasco and vodka with a real lengthy squeeze of mayonnaise. And I do say squeeze. The whole point is to squeeze it because you want to get these strings of mayonnaise that run through the drink that look like a big old tapeworm. I'm just processing. I have a lot of things to process right now. Mmm, Tabasco. Lots of Tabasco. Equal parts Tabasco, in fact. In fact, I had to pop the cap off of my Tabasco to do a, uh, a one ounce pour or one and a half ounce pour 
of Tabasco to make it equal parts because this is a larger glass. Am I man enough? Am I equal to the challenge? Who invents these? Who comes up with the cursed cocktails? Because this, we've talked about this before, like some drinks are bad, but they intended to be good. Some drinks are this. This never set out to be a good drink. Some frat boy came up with this, right? Just some like wastrel nightmare human it was just like, <laughs> bro, you gotta drink this. We'll give you a dollar. This is worth a dollar to somebody in 1987. Inventive, inventive. I give it a lot of credits for their inventive. This drink right here speaks to all that is good about America. The power of entrepreneurship. of Tabasco sauce. Why do I have ounces of vodka? It's like an ounce of mayonnaise just shot down my throat. And there's a woo steam shooting out of my ears. Well, let me tell you something. Tabasco sauce is pretty spicy. I mean, it's not really spicy in terms of hot sauce, but if you ever just drink Tabasco sauce, <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> it's very hot. Once again, vodka. You're not gonna taste that. Mayonnaise, you get a sensation of it. There's a, some chunkiness of this drink as it slides down. It's really a visual garnish. You see it, it freaks you out. It gets in your head and it, it puts you way off. But when you're drinking it, you don't even mind it. They don't even worry about the mayonnaise. It's gone, man. It's not part of the fact here. But one and a half ounces of Tabasco sauce, that is hot. So there's a lot of vinegar in this and also a lot of capsaicin, enough capsaicin that my mouth, throat, nose, face, chest, neck, you know, all of it, currently on fire. Very unpleasant. <laughs> wow. I can breathe really great. That's one nice thing. You know, my sinuses have been whoosh, obliterated, kinda, but also like my throat might be closing. So we gotta watch out for that. It's painful. Most drinks aren't painful to drink. This one actually hurts. It is physically painful. I'm sweating profusely, just like absolutely just drenched, real spritzing over here. I'm sorry, uh, my brain just stopped working because I'm reading that the next drink is called the Ranchero and that it's a shot of tequila topped with Tabasco and ranch dressing. Do they drink that in frats? Is that a thing? They drink those in frats, what? It's an initiation drink. Is that true? You're just making a guess? Yeah. You're just fucking with me now. This is just torture Greg times now. Okay. Okay. I see how it is. The Ranchero, right after this. We're making this drink called a Ranchero that I possibly dreamed. I don't know if it was real, but apparently whatever psychic vibration I was receiving it from, it's going to be a shot of tequila. We're going to go with one, one ounce. We're building it small. Come on, I'm not trying to die here. I'm making two because Meredith says she's going to join me in this one. Okay, wow, we're gonna go with even less, slightly less than a half. <laughs> Why am I measuring? It's, it's literally, time. yeah, it's like a shot glass here. Mini bottle of Tabasco, and it's a couple dashes of Tabasco in there. And then you throw some ranch dressing on it. Then you just do a nice little, oh, little, little of that in there. So apparently in some circle of hell, this kind of thing is called a ranchero. <laughs> Whoa! hi ya ya did you taste the ranch? I didn't taste the ranch. I got a little, but... I didn't taste it. They all Tabasco after that. That was a lot of Tabasco sauce. I think maybe I went a little too heavy on the Tabasco. I think my Tabasco hand is too heavy. Whew, man. So, I mean, I, I did taste the tequila. Uh, Patron cuts right through there. That was not enjoyable. I could see, yep, frat guy. If you're, that's frat guy approved. It's a hazing drink. Yeah, that would have been the format for this episode. Frat guy approved. Let's get ready to rumble. All right, here's our first drink and the winning drink is mojito i love a mojito so the first thing i gotta do is cut up some limes to get at their good good lime juice i'm just gonna split up three limes and each of these mojitos needs a ounce of lime juice all right so there we go an ounce of lime juice in each i've done mojitos a couple different ways actually we did a whole episode of breaking down mojitos anders erickson had a really cool take on a mojito that i liked a lot he called it the slow mojito. Half an ounce is simple into each of these. So we're gonna add a bunch of mint to this. A couple schools of thought here. Uh, you know, you can leave it on the stem. You can take it off the stem. I'm just gonna leave it on the stem today. We're gonna go fast and loose. I like a lot of mint in my mojito. Um, kind of an insane amount. 
All right, now I gotta pick my rum. I mean, I think the traditional in Cuba is a three-year Havana Club, which is a very neutral rum. I think that the ha my Hamilton white stash would be a very nice choice there. Don Q would be good there. The Plantation Three Star. Yeah, let's go with that. So the left, this will be mine. All right, and there you go. Two ounces of our Plantation Three Star. And then for this one, I gotta pick one of these guys. I'll just pick this first white one that's in front of me. No idea what this is. All right, and then I'm gonna leave that down here, mark it as used. What? No, the color, this one is the yellow one. Grab my muddler, and I'm gonna muddle. And uh, when I muddle, I really just push straight down. I don't really do any twisting. I just wanna crush this without tearing it, without shredding it. We're just kinda really bruising it. And then I do this stupid move to try and get all the stuff that's on my muddler off of it. So we've got our rum in there. We've got our drinks all built. I've muddled them. Let's get some ice in there and stir them up. Got my nice ice in here. There we go. I'm gonna give these guys a stir. All right, almost there. Come on, baby. Make some seltzer with my handy dandy drink meat. Just pick up one of these. They are great. They'll carbonate anything. Technically, I could have carbonated this cocktail. Put it up there in the little link eyeball thing, the little letter I, and I'll put it down there and you can pick one up and uh, it's an affiliate link and that's great for me and you and everybody. Love this thing, it's really good. It's way better than a soda stream. And there we have our seltzer. A straw for each. There we go. All right, there's my mojitos. I even might garnish these or something like that or whatever, but like frankly, for this episode, it doesn't matter. Here is my Plantation Three Star Mojito. It's a delicious mojito. I'm gonna finish that drink today. Exactly what a mojito should be. Minty, bubbly, lime, tart, balanced with sweetness. Very refreshing drink, I love it. And here we have my mystery rum. I don't know what this is, it's the moment of truth. I guess the first thing I gotta do is identify the rum and then find out if it made a good mojito. So whatever this rum was, let's see. No, oh, dude, we gotta wash that down, hold on. Oh man, it's so sweet. Whoo, that's bad. Ugh, there's like a, mm. oh, that tastes like cough syrup. That tastes, this tastes like some kind of cough syrup, for real. I cannot identify what the rum is supposed to be flavored like. Mary, what is that? That is the Dr Bacardi Dragonberry. Dragonberry? What the hell's a dragonberry? I think it's supposed to be like, it has pictures of dragon fruits and strawberries, so. Okay. It's a mixed berry Oops. Yeah. situation. Yeah, I was never gonna guess that, but okay, berry. Yeah, okay, so it's a wild berry. This is a Dr Bacardi wild berry. Dragon fruit doesn't really have a lot of flavor to it, so. Oh yeah, that makes perfect sense, because it tastes like cough syrup. This makes for a very poor mojito. Uh, let's try to describe it. Very sweet, that berry fruit, berry syrup flavor beats the mint. This drink does not lack for evolution, I'm gonna tell you that. It takes a second turn at the end that is like chewed up bits of plastic that would have been slightly burned and melted, puked into your mouth by someone else. No, it's not good. But I mean, like, this will never be good. What would you do with this? The only thing you can do with this is make a, a, a seltzer. You just throw this in seltzer. They suggest putting it with ginger ale. No, no more sugar. Take this, put an ounce of it into seltzer and make like basically a hard seltzer. That'd be fine, I guess, if you like that flavor. There's nothing else you can do with it. It's disgusting. Today on Drink This, not that. Uh, if you're gonna make a mojito, uh, use Plantation Three Star. Don't use this. It's better use any actual rum. Uh, that would be fine. Um, I really wanna try, just out of morbid curiosity, I am fascinated by the idea of a whiskey cola. I wanna see this thing really make a cola, do some carbonation. It definitely has a lot of components. Like, it engaged other parts while making that whiskey sour. We heard it. I don't know what it could have been doing because they put no, not even an attempt at like a froth or a foam or a texture thing going on. I don't have anything comparable for the Bartesian. It can't even come close to it. But there is this thing that comes in the classic collection called an Uptown Rocks. I don't know what this drink is. It's not a classic I've ever heard of. When I see somebody like Bartesian make up a drink for their capsule, what I feel like they're saying is, this is the ideal drink, right? Like we're trying really hard to make our machinery and our flavors reproduce these existing cocktails. But this is the cocktail we would invent when left to our own devices using the assets we have at our disposal. So my thinking is maybe it's a good drink. Maybe it's okay. I don't know. And we're gonna put this whiskey cola in here. One thing too, I like that the screen on the Keurig is facing forward. On the Bartesian, you have to like lean over it. Oh, has gin been installed? It asks me. So I pull out the rum. Wow, there's a lot of suction on that. Wait a minute. Oh, baby. Okay. So I pull out the rum drink, this bottle, and these nipples are how they connect. A lot of spirits, not a lot, but a fair amount, 
like splash out of this when I pulled this out of the machine. And so there's a little bit of rum around on the connection area where this guy's about to pour it into. And presumably there's some rum in the lines too, right? So, I mean, gin and rum, they're comparable. I think if you're gonna have two, spirit, one, two spirits share the same hoses, gin and rum is the way to go. Maybe there's a second set of hoses for the gin. That is possible. It uses one nipple, two sets of hoses. They like the aesthetics of having two bottles on each side. Maybe, maybe. So to start, start. New song. It's making a whole new song. It sounds like an orchestra tuning up. We're carbonating now. We're carbonating, baby. Woo! Here it comes, whiskey cola. Fizzy fizzy. Ooh, yeah. That looks like a cola, that looks good. I do feel very cyberpunk drinking from my drink replicator. Okay, so, um, well, first things first, let's try this whiskey cola. It is bubbling and there is some kind of a sheen of citrus oil across the surface, I presume. Smells like a Coke. Terrible. Oh shit, that's bad. Fuck that. That tastes toxic. That tastes like the inside of a vacuum cleaner. I can't explain why that's true, but I know that that's true. Not even a vacuum cleaner. You ever seen one of those mechanical, like, carpet flickers? My grandmother had a bunch of those for the stores she used to own. It's like this stupid little thing, you go and it's got like brushes that flip the carpet. That's what that tastes like the inside of. Okay, here we go with an Uptown Rocks. Very strong fake peach smell. Smells like a peach schnapple. Tastes like a um, urinal cake. I don't know that from experience. It tastes like what I imagine a urinal cake to taste like. Meredith isn't responding because she's a lady. She doesn't know what a urinal cake is. If you go to the men's room, there's a little pink or blue puck in there for you to pee on. This tastes like that. I mean, it tastes like the nicest version of that possible. It tastes like it fresh, unpeed on. I don't like it. Back to my whiskey Coke. I had such high hopes for this. It is so dark. It smells like a Coke, mostly. But it tastes like plastic or something. I don't know. It doesn't, that's not good. Let's pull another one of these recipes out and see what I get. Seat one, Midori Margarita. A Midori Margarita. Doesn't say with salt or without. Huh. 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 A Midori Margarita. Hands of Fate, we're gonna need a few things. Thank you, Hands of Fate. Is this the Fortaleza Blanco? Yeah, okay, that's perfect. That's great. This is a high, top shelf margarita. Oh, the very finest Midori. One ounce of lime juice for a Midori Margarita. God, I do love the smell of lime juice. It's just unbelievable. Powerfully transportive, the smell of lime juice is. It's just like, where's the vacation? Love it. I need an ounce of Midori. You know, if I just see Midori Margarita, I think you swap out the modifier. You swap out the the, um, the Curacao, the Cointreau, whatever you want to use in your margarita. And you would make it the Midori. I've never had to make a Midori Margarita, so I don't have any idea what spec to use. I'm just going to do this as if I was making a margarita, but not using Cointreau. I'm gonna use Midori. So I've got one ounce of Midori, which is probably a lot. And now I've got two ounces of my Blanco tequila using Fortaleza, which is a good Blanco tequila available from our friends at Curiata, where many fine spirits are sold. And we're gonna put some ice in here and shake it up. One ice cube goes in, one ice cube gets cracked. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Oh, a real margarita glass, even better than a coupe. Green. Whoa, that is green. I gotta tell you, if this is halfway drinkable, you garnish that with a chunk of watermelon, it look good. I don't think it's gonna be halfway drinkable. Let's see if the customer over at table one with his Midori margarita is onto something. No, they're not! Oh God, that's bad! <clears throat> oh, it gets weirder too. No, oh, it's a bad drink, that's a bad one. Very few drinks are bad in that way. It is just so bitter. Um, and just bitter. I'm not bitter, it's just so tart. It's so tart. I mean, it is so tart. Oh my God. And er herby in all the ways you don't really want anything to be. It just kind of tastes like skunky. 
and tart. Sour skunk. It's a skunk sour. That's what I'm gonna call this drink. You know, the one thing I do have to contemplate, although Midori is pretty sweet, it should be sweet. I really expected this drink to be sweet. I I'm gonna try something stupid. I'm gonna throw it back in my shaker real quick, and I'm just gonna throw in like a drop of simple. I know a lot of people add some sweetness to their marks. Maybe, maybe when table one was making these guys at home. <laughs> Maybe when they were making it home, they made it a little sweeter. Giving them really the benefit of the doubt. Oh my God, no. It's absolutely luminescent. It's so green. I swear to God, this drink is actually glowing. Well, it's way less tart. It is still terrible. It has no goodness. It has no, there is no goodness in this. It has a soul that is made of just vile filth. It is a bleak abyss of despair. This drink is worse than any drink has right to be, considering what a simple combination of ingredients it is. It's not like I took a bunch of Tabasco sauce and mayonnaise and egg whites and vodka or something like that and threw that together and made a joke of it. Like, this is an honest attempt at somebody making a drink, and it it's unbelievable how bad it is, <laughs> given all of those things being true. For a single substitution, the smell of rotting hay. That is a very specific smell that is so bad. Just the foulest smell. If you've ever been a couple of times, they've used hay bales around like when they were doing construction and changing an interchange and then they left them out in the rain and they got wet and then they rotted in the sun. That hay bale rotting smell, it's in this drink. If you've ever wanted to have that as a cocktail, the Midori Margarita is the luminescently neon green drink for you. And with that, I conclude that the customer at table one is fucking wrong and that this drink must be poured into the gutter of history. And sometimes it just like surprises you with this very like, surprise, mint, mint, hello. You know, it's, it's like you, you, you've just grown accustomed to the nightmare of rotting skunk piled maggot infested hay bales. And then mint, mint. <laughs>